Although Isaac Newton developed the theory of universal gravitation in the 17th century, the actual value of the universal gravitation constant remained an unknown for over 100 years. Newton determined that gravitation was universal and that the force acting between two objects depends solely on the mass of the objects and the distance separating them. To describe this mathematically, Newton created the law of universal gravitation involving the constant g. Newton, however, had no way of establishing what the constant's value actually was. The value of the gravitational constant remained unknown until 1798, when Lord Cavendish constructed an extremely sensitive device capable of measuring the small gravitational forces exerted between two small masses. Called a torsion balance, this device consists of two equal spherical masses attached to the ends of a lightweight horizontal shaft. A long, thin wire hanging from a central post suspends the shaft at its midpoint. During the experiment, two large masses are placed next to each of the small suspended spheres. The gravitational attraction between the small mass and its neighboring larger mass causes the shaft to rotate about its axis, twisting the suspension wire. The shaft comes to rest when the gravitational force and the resisting force of the twisted wire are exactly equal. To find the universal gravitation constant, we need to determine just how far the suspended shaft rotates in a given time interval. Because of the small gravitational force, the angle of rotation is much too small to measure directly. To overcome this, a laser beam is directed at a small mirror affixed to the torsion wire. The projection of the reflected beam onto a measurement scale causes the rotation to be amplified. The distance traveled by the reflected beam can be used to determine the change in position of the suspended sphere. The large masses are put into position directly beside the suspended spheres. The moving beam of light reveals what is rarely observed, gravity acting between two small objects. As seen in this time lapse of the light beam's motion, the gravitational force pulls the spheres toward the large masses, causing a slight twisting of the torsion wire. The suspended spheres oscillate about a point where the torsional and gravitational forces are exactly equal. When the spheres come to rest, the location of the light beam is noted. The gravitational constant can be found by repositioning the large mass and measuring the acceleration of the small sphere as it is pulled back in the opposite direction. The acceleration of the sphere is due to the gravitational pull of the repositioned mass and the pushing force supplied by the twisted wire. Since these two forces are equal, the net force is two times the gravitational force and results in a uniform acceleration of the sphere. For small deflections, this acceleration is very nearly along a straight line. After 60 seconds of accelerated motion have elapsed, the position of the beam is measured once again. The distance traveled by the beam is 1.0 centimeters. Using the geometry of the apparatus, it can be shown that the distance traveled by the sphere in 60 seconds is 1.4 times 10 to the minus 4 meters. By substituting the time and distance into the kinematic equation for accelerated motion, the average acceleration of the sphere is found to be 7.9 times 10 to the minus 8 meters per second squared. The net force on the sphere can be found using Newton's second law. Since this force includes the push of the torsion wire, the gravitational force is only half this amount, or 6.0 times 10 to the minus 10 newtons. This result demonstrates just how minute the gravitational forces are between common objects. 
Using Newton's law of universal gravitation and the known values for the masses and distance of separation, the calculated value of the universal gravitation constant is 6.4 times 10 to the minus 11 newton meters squared per kilogram squared, which corresponds well to the accepted value for the gravitational constant.